All right, my guys, it says we are live. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to hop in. We are going to have some creative time together today. Always excited and fun. Checking everything. All right, my guys, it says we are live. So we... Awesome, awesome. Got everything showing. Pretty sure. <laughs> I'll give you guys a couple minutes to get in and get settled. If you have time, throw something in the chat saying hello. Always excited to have some playtime with you guys here on my YouTube channel. I am still getting used to doing this on YouTube instead of on uh, my in Facebook, so it's always a little weird trying to make sure I'm hitting all the buttons right and all that kind of stuff. So thank you guys for your patience while I figure out this transition. We definitely um, have less problems on YouTube than we have had on Facebook, so that is a that is a good thing, right? All right. Right. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, guys, and welcome if you guys are watching the um, the replay later. Hopefully, you guys are able to um, get in and hop in here at some point. I'm going to double check a couple things real quick. Oh, you know what? I don't think the link I sent out is working. Give me just a second. I'm going to try to fix that. I don't know what's wrong. Do, 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 do. The YouTube. Because there aren't people watching yet. Must mean my link that they gave me was wrong. Let's hit this button. Copy. Perfect. Let me go plug that in somewhere real quick. Sorry for the delay and the fun part. All right. Let me edit and fix this. So that my people from my you my Facebook group can find it. Do 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 do. I love technology. Not really. <laughs> Corrected link below. Do, 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 do. This makes for great pod, right? <laughs> Perfect. There we go. Now we'll give you guys a few minutes to hop in now that the correct link is out there in the world. Like I said, still getting used to all of this and how to stream from one thing to another. <laughs> oh, technology is not my jam, friends. So I'll give you guys just a couple minutes to join in. Hopefully that link will work for you guys now. If not, then hey, that's okay. You can be watching the replay later. Um, like I said earlier, before I figured out there was something wrong, um, we are going to be playing in our illustrating Bible in Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 5. And we're going to be working to show you just this fun and easy way that you can create um, this really cool and funky distressed texture using your gel press and 
we're going to be using some baby powder. So a little disclaimer here, there are some people that prefer when they're dealing with baby powder um, to wear a mask so that they're not breathing it in. So just disclaimer, footnote, all that kind of stuff. If that is you, make sure that you have one of those handy. I'm sure we probably all have some left over from um, the last few years. <laughs> Um, and so I'm sure we've got them. If you feel more comfortable, please feel free if you're going to do this technique to go ahead and wear one of those. Because like I said, it just makes some people more comfortable. We're also going to be playing with some acrylic paint. So I've got some stashes here and there around my, I've got some of these and I've got some of these. All right, let's go ahead and we will get started. And hopefully people will jump in later. So for those of you that don't know, my name is Carrie Silly, and I am the Assistant Creative Director for Gel Press. I also specialize in using Gel Press for Bible journaling and faith journaling. So I'm super excited um, to hang out with you guys for a little bit today and um, just have some fun. I want to show you guys this technique because it is one of my favorites because I'm one of those people, I love grungy aesthetics, I love grungy prints, but I can't really do it on purpose. So this is a fun way to kind of do it on accident, if you will. <laughs> And so let's get started. Um, I've got my gel press plate here, of course. It is still kind of grungy from the last time I used it, but that's okay. We like that. And we're gonna actually start with our baby powder. So again, if you're catching this later, feel free to wear any kind of protective masks or whatever and it makes you feel more comfortable if you're using baby powder. I know a lot of people, um, have problems with breathing it in and that kind of stuff. So we're actually gonna start and we're going to just sprinkle, make sure I have it open, onto our plate. We're not going to cover it. What we're doing is the baby powder is going to act as like a barrier to the paint that we're going to put down. It's going to, would have helped to have a brayer already over here. Ooh, my brayers need to be clean. And you know what? I'm going to use this one. I haven't used this one yet. So this is the brand new gel press brayer. Um, hopefully I can show it because they gave it to me. Um, in the fun colors. Yay! Um, so what that baby powder is going to do is it's going to act as a kind of mask or a barrier for the colors we're going to add now. I'm going to try to duplicate kind of a, I guess, a copper patina kind of thing. And see if I can kind of layer in a way where it's going to give us that patina copper kind of look. So I'm going to start with, this is just some, what is this? This is Dazzling Metallics and Rich Espresso. Um, I don't typically use, like to use metallics in this kind of craft acrylic because they tend to um, just not keep their metallic qualities, but this, actually, this brand actually works pretty well at a pretty low price point, so I am here for it and I like it. And so we've put it down, we put our paint, and then we're just going to brayer it, just like we would normally. But like I said, that the paint that we left on there from last time, and then the baby powder is gonna act as a little bit of a barrier, but just in those little places where we were and uh, where it was there. And then we're gonna kind of repeat the process. I'm going to come over here. I'm gonna just clean my brayer off a little bit. And then we're gonna repeat the process. We're gonna go back in with our baby powder again. I usually, oop, that was a little too much. That's gonna be interesting. A little baby powder drizzle. And then this time we're gonna go in with this aqua color from Folk Art. And give it some little drizzles here. Bloop, bloop. There we go. And you can really do this with as many layers as you would like. I recommend stopping at like three. I find that's a good mix. Oop, I got some chunky right there. I find that's a good mixture of colors. One more thing real quick here. Do, 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 do. Nope, wrong button. La, 
la 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 la. So we've got that one. Let's do one more color. So I'm going to be gentle with this this time. And we're going to do a little sprinkly, little sprinkled ankle, if you will. And then we're going to go in with a lighter blue. Ooh, that looks really washed out and bright. That does not what it looks like on my laptop. Oh, all right, that exists. All right, so we got our brown, we got our blue. We're gonna go in with this, actually one that's called Patina. So it's a really light blue. And add a little bit here and there. Oop, that's probably too much, but that's okay. We can make that work. And then we're just gonna brayer it on. And I just love this because it's super fun and it makes for such just really unique and grungy looking prints without having to really strategically place kind of those gaps and those things, those images. Um, and since we're in playtime, I am going to just use some digital copy paper and just place that right there and we're going to give it just a nice little press now because we did use more paint than we would normally use for a regular print you want to be careful that you're not applying too much pressure because sometimes if you add too much it kind of does that weird skating across thing my coloring looks weird in this video there's nothing to do about it now because we're live but hey it looks funky and i don't know why oh well so i'm just giving it a little bit of extra love in the massage department so we get all those yummy little distressness out and then remember we can always do the little peak test see do we like it do we not like it yes no put it back down give it some more rubby rubs Oh, yes. I mean, look at that. Oops, wrong button. There we go. So you can see since I put that copper metallic down first, you get this really cool, almost distressed, coppered kind of situation. So let's try it backwards. So this time we did brown, then dark blue and then light blue so let's flip it let's do the blues down first and then put the brown down and let's see what um what that will do for our color combination so i'm going to set that one aside um you know what let's see if we can what we can pull off of here a little bit more so i'm actually going to pull an old print that i have here i'm going to use this just to kind of clean my plate up just a smidge and add some cool distress details to this really old print that I've had for a very long time. <laughs> Ooh, funky. Love. So now I'll just add a little bit of distress detail and I've kind of cleaned my plate off a little bit. I can even go back if I want to see if there's any more yummy bits left on it. Sweet. All right, so we did it with the metallic color first. So let's do it in reverse this time. So we're going to sprinkle sprinkle our baby powder on here and then let's start with our light color give it a little drizzle drizzle and of course take our handy dandy brayer and give it you could also do with a solid color first but i think you can do the dark blue, the light blue, whatever you want. That's the fun part about this is you can really experiment and see, okay, what kind of print do I get if I put this down first versus this other one down first? So then we're going to put our darker color, which ooh, I'm about to run out of this color. I'm going to have to buy some more. So I don't know if you guys were on earlier and you're probably confused as to why there are two lives on this channel in one day. So earlier um, I did a live with uh, Cheryl Boglioli, who is the creative director for Gel Press. We did um, a live um, on, technically it was on the Gel Press YouTube, but we just streamed it to both of ours so it would have a wider audience where we announced that we just released um, an A4 plate 
So if those of you that aren't familiar with it, here in the US, our standard size paper is an eight and a half by 11, which is why we typically will play on an eight by 10 plate. But an A4 plate is slightly taller and slightly shorter width wise. So it, I'll put a link to it in the description for you guys to go watch that live. It was really cool because it's the first time I've really seen it and got to uh, be around people um, in the comments and talking about it that it covers so much more of our US eight by 10 or eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, and it's the standard in so much of the world. So I'm super excited that we finally have that to offer. So in, it's in Europe coming to Australia and limited in the US soon. So that'll be super fun to see people start playing with that. So this time we just tried it in reverse. We did our blues first and then we did our metallic. So let's just see what kind of difference that makes. And what I love about doing this technique is you can really do it with, here I'm kind of using those metallics and those um, to kind of get that rusted patina kind of look. But just for fun, we'll do one in a second with just some bright colors. And you can really see that you can do it with really any color combo and still get really cool and really fun results. In fact, I might do it with, I've got a bunch of metallics in front of me. I might play with those and see what it does. So I'm just giving it that nice little rubby rub so we get all those yummy little bits up. Oop, got my corner stuck over there. I peeled it up weird. Cool. So that almost gives us like a water kind of effect to our print on that one. So that's fun. And then I'm gonna take that print that I used last time again and use it just to clean up any wet paint. If my plate was nice and clean, it probably would all come up, but my plate is not nice and clean, as we know. <laughs> so I'm just using this to clean up any wet paint that might be on there. And just continuing to layer. Look how cool that looks. Love. I have a mad stash of uh, just random things that I have left over from, or random prints I have left over. I do want to clean my plate a little bit better. So let's just, we always recommend your, the best way to clean your plate is just to pull another print. So let's see what kind of print we can get using this hot pink with this blue. And it might not clean it all the way, but it'll get most of it. Because what's that? What that is doing is it's kind of rejuvenating, rewetting, whatever word you want to call it. That wet paint that's already on our plate. Give it a little press, and now all those little yummy bits, or most of them, will want to stick to that paint we put down, and then stick to our paper. Giving it some nice little rubby rubs so we can get all those little bits off. If it doesn't, that's fine too. We have other ways of cleaning. There we go. Oop, that's pretty good. Got most of it. And as you can tell, my plate is well loved because it's yellow. Woo, there we go. So you can see it picked up all the little bits that we had left from our other projects and a little bit of blues that we had left from this project. Love. Well, that was easy. Done. All right, just for giggles, let's do this also with a um, kind of a tropical, actually, no, I think I'm gonna do, well, it is tropical. So we're gonna do my little, I've never done it with just these. So let's try it with these funky metallics. And those of you that are joining, we are in a minute going to be jumping into our illustrating Bible. And we are going to be playing in Titus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, which I will read those real quick. It is, but when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us. But not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. Um, and I chose that verse because I was going through some old things that I had and I actually had it printed out. So apparently I had planned to use it on something else and didn't. And I just 
kind of fell in love with that concept and that idea of God revealing his kindness and love um, to save us, but not because he saved us, not because of the stuff we did, because that's what that that line means. Not because of the right, not because of what I said, not because of the righteous works we had done. And so I just loved that idea because I definitely know that I've fallen into the trap of working for salvation. Maybe I'm the only one. Um, and thinking if I was better, if I was, if I was a better Christian, if I was a better mom, if I was a better fill in the blank, whatever your, 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 your kind of issue is, then God would love me more or God would hear my prayers more or any of that kind of stuff. Or, but I mean, so many scriptures tell us that salvation is just there. It's not something that we have to work for. He doesn't love one person more because they're a better Christian or they're a better mom or they're a better this or a better that. And that maybe, I mean, and I know maybe a lot of us do that. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm the only one who tends to do that. But I just love how that scripture um, reiterates. And I think sometimes we need to hear it a lot. <laughs> maybe it's just me too. All right, so we've got our blue down. We've got our little sprinkling of baby powder. We're going to go in with this kind of magenta. So these are all the Pebeo Studio Acrylic Metallics, which I love. They just have such a cool um, thickness and a really cool shimmer to them. I want to try this, actually. I also have some things called stencil butters that are from the Crafters Workshop. And they have a really amazing metallic texture as well. All right. And you can see I separated my two cool colors because I've got a blue and I've got a green. And then I've got that kind of pink color, which really still has cool undertones, but it's still reddish pink. Um, but I separated them so that they wouldn't blend together as much. So they got separated by that pink. And this is the color that got me just obsessed with this particular um, paint. I was using it at a trade show, and it is just this really fantastic, I can't remember, they call it something, um, iridescent green yellow. So it's just this really beautiful, subtle shimmer of this like really great lime green. And I fell in love with it, so I bought it. <laughs> We're going to just lightly brayer that over and clean our brayer off over her. All right, so let's see what that color combo does for us. I think we're going to stick with the patina ones for our Bible, um, but it's always fun to show what you can do with other color combos. So we're going to give that just a nice little press. Now, some people like to use their hands. Some people like to take their brayer and actually kind of press the back. Some people have what's a, I believe it's called a burnisher. So it's kind of a big circle with a handle where they can kind of go like this. I tend to be a very hands-on, touchy-feely kind of person <laughs> when it comes to this kind of stuff. Really not in real life. Physical touch is not my love language, but that's okay. And so we're just going to give it some nice little rub -a -dubas. And then do a little peak test. Maybe put it back down a little bit more. Ooh, that's super fun. So you can see we've got that cool grunginess. Just a few of those really vibrant pops of that green. Let's see what this leftover bit is going to look like, too. So we've got some leftovers. Now, little tip. Had I wanted to make sure all of that paint came up the first time, which sometimes you never know until you pull it, I could have let it sit there and it might have pulled more. I don't know. But this way I get two for one. Yay! And so I'm just giving it just a nice little rubby rub so that we can 
see what kind of little bits we'll get off the second one. Hmm, that's funky. Look at that. It almost feels like a 3D. Like I should put those 3D glasses on or a magic eye and something's going to pop out at me. But you still got, ooh, look at that shimmer. Love it. Yay, so that's going to be fun to use later. Yay. All right, so now the hard part, picking which one we want to use. So obviously, yes, we were doing playtime. I could have just put these directly into... Uh, I could have printed directly into my Bible. That would have been no problem. Um, but since we were doing playtime, I just printed it on paper. But I could have easily just taken my entire plate on my little acrylic thing and bloop, it right into my Bible. But since these do have three layers of paint, they do take a little bit longer to dry than your typical gel print. So we're actually going to do a little switcheroo here. Grab my Bible. Here is my bubble. And so, like I said, because you are using like three layers of paint and they tend to be just a smidge thicker, um, we're actually gonna use one that I made a long time ago. It was a sample I showed you guys earlier. Um, and so it has a little bit of metallic, but I just love it. I think it's pretty. Um, and so what we're gonna do is I want, and bonus, because if you have this Bible, you know that the beginning of every new book. It has the words or the title in a very, very large chunky font, which sometimes you want, sometimes you don't. But using it this way too, I'm going to be able to actually cover that up. Um, not that we don't love you, Titus, but I don't want your big funky font. And rather than do like a straight edge, I think I'm going to just have a little fun and do like this kind of torn edge, just to add a little bit more texture and a little bit more funkiness. Funky, funky. And then we're gonna just, ooh, I hit my camera. Sorry about that, friends. Gonna kind of eyeball it, and we're actually just going to take some glue. I'm gonna use my Tombow Aqua, which is my go-to fave, and it has this broad tip, which is really nice if you're doing like a big chunk like this, like a big section. And it also has like little teeth on the end, so it allows it to kind of apply little lines so you don't end up with like big blobs, which is always nice. Make sure I'm going all the way to the edge here so we get a nice seal. And then we're just gonna line our paper up here, just making sure that it goes, our color goes all the way to the edge. I just like doing that little bit of torn on the edge because I feel like it just adds a little, just a little something, something. Give it a nice little press here. And then we're gonna do the cheater way because I don't like to measure stuff because um, I can never measure stuff correctly. So we're going to then just flip our paper over and just take our handy dandy scissors. And we're just gonna use our page as our guide to just trim our paper down. Now, if you're better at measuring and stuff than I am, you can totally just measure, but I tend not to be super great at that. Boom. Save that little scrap for later. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the top and the bottom and just give it just a little trim, just going right along the edge of our page. Some of that's hard to see because the colors are very similar. Yay! Boom! There we go. Look how fun that is! I love it. And so, let's go read the scripture again. So, like I said, we were in Titus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. And it says, But when the kindness of God our Savior... And his love for mankind appeared to save, he saved us, not by works or righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, through the washing and regeneration and renewal, washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So this is obviously a different translation than the one I read earlier, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, in fact, I'm trying, I don't know if I've ever talked. So this one is the Christian Standard Bible. I tend to read out of the New Living Translation, um, which is the NLT. But, you know, to each his own. 
So what I'm going to do now is I want to kind of continue in that thought of um, God's love. So I thought it would be fun if you guys have never seen my little, I've got my little thingy here of all my gel prints from other various projects. Um, and I just want to have some fun. And it's a good way to show you to just how to be able to use um, some leftover bits you might have, whether it's gel prints or whether it's... Uh, pattern paper from like maybe a scrapbooking project, whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to go through and just make some really simple hearts out of my leftover gel prints here. And I'm not doing the whole little foldy thing so they're exactly even because um, I just want them to be I want them to be wonky. I want them to be a little all over the place. I'm going to take our little pink print from earlier too. And I find it's kind of easier for me to kind of cut a little square out and then go in and I want to make sure I get this little yummy bit in there. So I'm going to go in and just kind of free form, free hand. I don't know if it's going to free hand if you're using scissors, but you know what I mean. We're just going to make a bunch of funky little hearts with just a bunch of random and different colors. I do want to kind of stay in the, not the color scheme, but I, like I started to pick up this one, but I feel like that yellow would be too bright and it would just like take over and be like, oh, there's no other colors other than that yellow. So we're going to stick with some, like a lot of blues and maybe some pinks. Just nothing that's going to like overpower and kind of take over the whole show here. But this is really fun to do if you are like me and you hoard like leftover bits and leftover pieces from scrapbooking if you still do that, which I haven't done that in forever, but it is still super fun. All right, let's see. So I'm just digging through my little pile here and seeing what I have already made. This one's fun because this one's actually done on black. So it has a little bit different of a hue to the background than the um, than on white paper would have, which is super fun. Kat Kerr actually has an entire video on our YouTube channel that about uh, like just what a difference it makes using a different color paper rather than the traditional white. Um, I'll try to remember to link that one below too. It's really cool, but it just adds it just adds a little something something to our project. Okay, I think I'm gonna do I don't know three or four more. As I dig through my pile here and chat, oh, this one's cool. This one was an image transfer, but I like the little words that are on it. So let's do, let's do this little section so we have a little bit of yellow and the blue in it. And then we'll keep that guy. I'm gonna try to make this one a little bit smaller. So we've got kind of a variety. our little our little guy make a couple more I think dig through my little pile here this one's a cool one this one's a cool one let's do a little baby heart out of this right here so I get a little bit of pink just a pop of that yellow it doesn't have to be anything crazy I still have this voice in my head from like elementary school I don't remember which teacher it was that said everything should always have a pop of yellow in it I don't know I think I do that like unconsciously now like most of my projects have like a pop of yellow in it something we just can't shake from our childhood right <laughs> maybe that's just me maybe that's me all right let's see let's do oh that's a funky one let's do that one let's find one more let me go ahead one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's do a couple more, I think. Let's see. Digging through my piles here. Oh, I like that one. Let's see what's on those. Oh, let's do these. These are from a project. Leftovers. So let's do let's do over here. So we kind of get a little bit of that white popping through. I 
And we'll probably put him in the back because he's got a lot of white at the bottom. But I like how the painter, the painterliness, is that a word? I think so, of the top. Did this little guy. These were from a project, or probably a live, where we were playing with some kind of metallics. Oops, messed that one up. That's okay. I don't like you, buddy. Not, I mean, you're a beautiful heart, but we're gonna trim you up a smidge. All right, he's not perfect, but we love him anyway. All right, and one more, I think. Let's see what I have in my pile. Oh, let's do this one. This one's fun. This one's funky. Why do I keep, that's what I keep doing wrong. I was like, I keep starting on the edge. Instead of cutting my little square out like I did with all the other ones. That way I don't end up with like that little white nubbin at the bottom. Yay! Much better. Let's trim you down just a smidge. Bloop! Get that other guy out of the way. I'm just going to trim him so he's a little bit... More of a pointy heart than the other ones. Yay! Cool! So we've got our little plethora of hearts. And I'm not going to try to overthink it about what needs to go where. I do, however, need my glue because I couldn't find it. And of course, making sure I'm not covering up the verse unless I wanted to. But I don't want to at this, this juncture. So we're going to kind of do just like a little collage of all of our funky little hearts here. I think I'm gonna move this guy up here. And we'll go in and kind of define them a little bit with maybe some kind of pen or something. But I want to kind of embrace the chaos, if you will. That's kind of fun. It's kind of fun, it almost looks like a bouquet kind of situation. And we'll go in, like I said, We'll go in and kind of define the edges here in a minute. I probably should have taken a picture of that, but I didn't. Usually that's what I do, take a picture, a little tip. If you're putting something down and you're like, oh, I love it, take a picture of it on your phone so that you can remember what, where it was. I'm gonna tilt him just a smidge. That was a watercolor one and it kind of turned out with almost like a, a really soft landscape kind of thing, which I think is really fun. So we're just going to try not to overthink our life. I'm not sure if that's possible for me. I'm going to tuck this little guy under here. Yay! Okay. Now to try to remember where I had all of the other ones, which... Give it a nice little of this. And I just love how this is kind of a mix of colors and patterns. Um, no, let's not put you there. Let's put, nope, don't like you there. Oh, I should have taken the picture of the one I liked earlier. All the bad words. Now let's put this guy and kind of tuck him. There we go. That way it doesn't look like we're just building it. They are organically kind of floating together. Put that little guy right there. Put our little big guy. Kind of, we'll put him kind of under. But like I said, this is great to use if you've been practicing with your gel press and now you've got all these prints or you just have leftover like pattern paper or if you're like me, I have pattern paper probably still left over from when I scrapbooked and I haven't done that in forever. Um, let's see, let's put this bright one right here. Put this little friend right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we need one more. I think we're going to put this little guy. Yeah, I think we're just going to tuck him right there. Boom. Cute. Cute, 
cute, cute. All right, and let's go in with our favorite Faber Castell pen. It's a pit artist pen. And if you've seen, if you've ever watched, you know that I love doing this because I feel like it just adds a little bit. Um, we're going to go along the edge. But while it's still wet, we're just going to take our finger and kind of rub it. And what that's going to do is it's going to add just a little bit of a shadow and a little bit of a pop to our hearts here, but without giving it like a really harsh outlined line kind of feel. So it's it looks more just kind of messy, fun, like a shadow instead of a like a like an outline that you would find on like maybe a coloring book or something. I just feel like it softens it a little bit and kind of keeps it with that distressed, grungy kind of look that we are going for on this one. And just kind of, so I'm just outlining it and while it's still wet, so this is a pit artist pen from Faber-Castell. So it is what's called India ink. So when it dries, it is permanent. So that's why if you want to do any kind of smudging or anything like that, you definitely want to make sure that you do it as soon as you apply it. Some people would use like a sponge or something, but I mean, I'm, I'm a finger painty kind of girl. Let's just, God gave me 10 little brushes. <laughs> so this is just going to add some dimension to our project here. And anyone that joined later, we are playing with a distress technique on our gel press plate. So, or if you're watching the replay, welcome. This was filmed live on Wednesday. What is it? October 12th. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what day it is. This is my life. Get a nice little smudgy. Nice little. This really works best on top of like an acrylic paint. You can use it on top of raw paper. It does not smudge as well just because of the porosity of paper versus kind of the, the finish of acrylic paint, but it does work. It gets the job done. So we are just about done with our little, our little smudgy kins here. So just doing just a really, a really nasty rough outline and then kind of going back and smearing it to kind of create that shadow. And I might go in and add some harsher lines too. So I got that and kind of do a rough edge. So you can tell this particular heart has uh, watercolors on it instead of an acrylic paint because it just it smears differently and that's okay. It's not better, just different. All right, I'm gonna go back in and add just a little bit of darker lines and a little bit of like almost like a stitching kind of thing. I wonder where my white pen is. That would be cool to do on this too. That would require me to know where I put my stuff. So I'm just kind of Again, just kind of working to make those pop a little bit more. Giving them just a little bit more depth. So we've got the little bit of shadow from the smear and the darker lines from the pen. Yay. Do, 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 do. And what I think I'm going to do, since I have the entire verse printed out, it's a really easy, fast way to add words to your projects. Okay, I feel like it needs another heart. I feel like right here is naked. Is it just me? Is it just me and I only thinks that? Okay, going to dig again. Hopefully I don't regret this. Um, let's see. Let's do... I think I need a couple more, like just... Almost like smaller ones that kind of trail off. Oh, here's a good something, something. This is a brayer sheet. So this was one that I used to clean my brayer off and got nice and chunky. Got some texture. We're gonna do this little guy and kind of have him right there. And I think I'm gonna do one little one in, I'm just going to use the same paper. 
I feel like it kind of needs to trail off a little bit. There's a little too much space down there at the bottom. But I just love this verse when I, obviously I had printed it out for something and never used it, so that happened. Maybe God needed it to be used today. There we go. Y'all, I can't stop. It's so fun. So I'm going to add just a couple small ones to kind of balance out my little one down at the bottom. I only said I was done putting hearts in. Apparently I was not. Let's see. Let's make him a little smaller. There's no small parts, just small hearts, I guess. What's that phrase? Small part, no small part. Just small actors, something like that. So we're going to tuck you right here. I'm going to do one more baby one for like right over here. And then I think we're good. Do a little baby one. And hump. And hump. Ooh, I jacked him up. My bad. So I'm going to do this little guy here. Maybe this little guy kind of right. Well, but you matchies. So maybe we're just going to... I don't know. I'm not sure what we're going to do with him yet. All right. Let's glue these little guys in. Give him a nice little place up there. Oh, I just felt they needed to come down just a smidge more. There's too much open space down at the bottom. So we're going to sit you right there. Maybe we'll use our baby one. And our baby one, he's going to trickle down this way. So it's almost kind of like, you know, like the thought bubbles. You know, like where it has like bubble, 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 then the big bubble. It's kind of what we just made. We made a, made a heart thought bubble. So we can stop and think. <laughs> so what a lot of times when I come into these lives, like I have a rough idea of what we're going to do, but sometimes, you know what, we just let creativity and the Holy Spirit just let it fly and just have fun. And so sometimes I'm like, I was going to do this, but you know what I really need to do is this. This one's fun because it's a brayer off sheet, so it has all sorts of layers and kind of chunkiness. So you can see as my pen is going across it, it's dragging because it's catching on all the chunkies. Love it. And these are not glued down super great yet, so I'm having to be a little bit more delicate with them. Whoop. Cute. I am here for it. Okay, next. I've got to find my paper with the scripture on it. Uh-oh, did I lose it? No, I didn't. Okay. So since I already have this kind of all printed out, I think I'm just going to use it as kind of a confetti journaling kind of thing. So I'm just going to cut it into strips. If I found my paper cutter, that would be faster, but we don't have that. So anyone that might be joining us later, we are in Titus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. And it just is discussing the idea, the great reminder that um, God showed us his kindness and his love through his, through his mercy. And it has nothing to do with us doing the right thing or saying the right thing. And I hope that's a freeing thought. Because I know for me, it just is hard sometimes the concept of grace and the idea that I don't have to earn things. It's just one of those, I think still just from, I don't say childhood trauma, but a little bit is, um, of just the belief that I have to work. I think that's why sometimes I personally um, embrace the, the spirit of busyness because I think sometimes I still struggle a little bit with that idea that working makes me worthy. And there's so much in scripture that says that's not true, but sometimes it's hard to let things go if it's kind of been your norm for so long. 
So I think I want to use the entire scripture because I really love the entire scripture. So we're just going to turn it into kind of, uh, let me get rid of that word because it's weird. Um, so I'm just going to turn it into kind of a little ticker tape, ticker tape, tape, tape kind of thing here and just kind of have it cascading down our whole little thing. And just kind of strategically, I think I might need a little bit more room, so I'm going to move it up just a little bit. I always love you just using words printed out for Microsoft Word for my journaling. It just makes it so fast. And then you don't stare at things and going, I don't like my handwriting. Um, so I'm kind of just making little judgment calls of where to snip it. Hopefully I don't regret We had, and then I want this word done to be right there. Do I want, oh no, I'm deciding. Do I want to use all of it? Kind of like just that. I think I, that is just verse. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use the other part. I really just kind of stick with that concept, like the difference between um, righteous things we had done and his mercy. So I think I'm going to leave just those as my, my keywords right now and just go in. If this was a longer video or I, if it was a video that I could speed up, um, I might actually be using my matte gel medium to put these down. Because I just really like the finish it gives, um, and it just really makes for a clean surface if I ever want to add anything else on top of it. But since we are kind of winding down our little live today, I'm just using just regular my Aqua Tombow. And using that little tip on the end, which is really great for stuff like this. And you can kind of see, and I'm, I'm kind of doing it without thinking about it, uh, when I am... Wanting to kind of emphasize a group, I will group the little strips together so you can see. Um, I kind of want to emphasize the idea of and love and he saved us. Um, kind of putting those together so you can see I've kind of stacked those visually on top of each other. I think I just do it without even thinking about it because it just it's the impact I'm trying to make. It's the thought I'm trying to um, suggest. Um, the same reason I wanted to make sure that the words we had done was together, even though on the strip that I cut them off of, they were actually on two separate lines. So I wanted them to be right next to each other because they're uh, kind of a complete thought that we are trying to get across of the righteous things we had done. And... And I want to leave this thought all together, but because of his mercy. Cute. I like that. I'm liking it. Um, and I think we are going to get rid of that snippy and trim this just a smidge. It's a little wonky. And then, oh, I got stuff stuck to there. Give it a nice little of that. And this. <laughs> Cute, super fun. And like I said earlier, this would be super easy to recreate with any kind of materials you might have, whether it's gel prints or whether it's pattern paper or construction paper or whatever you happen to have. I'm gonna just do some little outlining here so these pop a little bit and those edges don't get lost. Give it some nice little pops. And if I can find my white gel pen, we're gonna add some white, but that requires me to know where it is. I probably should have scooted this down just a smidge so there was less room at the bottom, but I think that bottom actually be a good place for me to um, add some journaling later. So I think I might do that just about kind of what, what the verse means to me and that kind of stuff. We won't do that on, we don't do that on the internet though, but I think that would be, 
a good use of that space. I wish I know. Oh, I don't know where my white pen is. Yay! I filled it. Score. So we're just going to go in and just add just some little white highlights. I love this pen, but it does get gunked up so easy. But the white stays white. A lot of times if you have like a, a white paint pen or something like that, it almost gets like an opaque kind of white. And it doesn't stay a vibrant white. This one does. It can be a little finicky. Oh, I should probably say what it is. It is the Jelly Roll from uh, Sakura. It is my favorite. Like I said, it can be a little finicky, but it's kind of worth it for the payoff. And you just have to be really careful that your paint is completely dry because it gets gunky really easy and it gets funky. Um, so as long as you treat it right, give it lots of love, and put its cap back on. <laughs> there we go. Just adding some little white here and there to give it just a little bit more visual interest and a little pop. Right there. Boo, boo, boo. Cute. And I think I am going to add some lines at the bottom so that I can do some journaling later. I don't think I'm going to do it now. But I'm going to add, I'm just going to use a piece of paper just to add some small little lines down here at the bottom. that I can make that one a little longer. I didn't want them to all be the same size, but that one was super short. I can go in and journal later with it about kind of what this verse is speaking to me and what I'm thinking and maybe a little bit of what we've discussed today. And then I'm gonna go in and underline. So I'm gonna circle our little three here and then underline our verses. Not that we didn't kind of recreate it over there, but. I think I'm going to add some little draggy, sketchy marks, just for a little bit more distressed grunginess, if you will around the whole thing and kind of fills in some of that space too. Like I said, I probably should have started our whole little collage a little bit farther down, but hey, this is alive. And once it's there, it is there, boo. It is not going anywhere. <laughs> so it's gonna fill in some space. It's also gonna just add a little bit of visual interest and visual detail. It's going to keep going with our little grungy, sketchy situation we got going on here. And this is just another Pit Artist pen. It's just a, has a finer tip than the other one. I'll go in on a few of these and add a few. I don't want to do a ton directly on the hearts, but just so that whole kind of sketchy line thing is reiterated across the whole thing. I always like doing little sketchy lines too because I, I feel like it sometimes gives almost like a sense of movement. If you watched last week's, uh, we did a page on um, music and so the lines really for that one gave it like a sense of movement um, for our cassette tapes and that kind of stuff that we were using. Fill in that little gap that I left right there. Sweet! I think we are done. I am happy. I will add some journaling. Oh, I almost forgot. We need to date it. October 12th, 2022. And that's weird. I actually wrote the date out. Normally I just do the numbers. Not sure why that changed today. 
All right, and there is our finished page from today. I am super happy with it. I love it. I think it's a fun technique to be able to make some really easily um, distressed and grungy kind of prints, um, but it's also just a really great way to show you um, of using prints you've had for a while that maybe you didn't like all of it, but maybe you like a little section, or maybe it's some pattern paper or scrapbook paper that you've had for a long time. Um, just cutting it up and making it smaller and using the little bits that you like because we all look, have bought, bought scrapbook paper and either ended up using none of it or just a little bit of it and you're like now what do I do with it cut it up turn it into other things you could do the same thing with cute little circles and make little bubbles like a little stack of bubbles like this like our hearts or you could do all sorts of fun shapes and just kind of make a little collage and pile them on there so I think we are done for today. Thank you guys always for joining me. Um, and I will see you guys on the next Creative Live. And I will make sure to put in the comments um, a link to the finished pages um, and to some of the products that I used today. Thank you guys as always so much and have an amazing rest of your Wednesday.